we'll split the talk in half. I'll speak five minutes. Emilio Torres from ELSA will speak the other half. Um, these are our combined financial interests. Now, when, uh, when we started contacting uh, Zimmer in early 2023, we are just 90 minutes away from Zimmer headquarters by car. We were so excited about FemtoCares because of the possibilities of improving vision in keratoconus and this new technique that was spearheaded by Susan Jacob and then the all femto integration by Shadi Awad would fit in perfectly into what we already had, which is corneal wavefront guided trans PRK and our Elsa Pace customized cross linking. So looking very forward to it. But then again, when I show you that this was one of the first cuts I did in the wet lab at Siemens, when I saw that ring, you should know I'm a total rookie in ring segment implantation. So I'm the perfect ideal test subject. I've never used PMMA rings. And when I saw that very soft and floppy ring, I was wondering, how do I get this ring segment into the cornea? Especially since following Shadi's footsteps, you keep the tunnel as tight as possible to have the maximum of effect. So I asked myself that question, how do I get the ring segment in? The second question, I have a cell biology background, so I asked myself, these eye banks, do they ever test their donors for keratoconus? Or will I cut a ring segment with keratocytes from a donor keratoconus patient and implant these keratoconus keratocytes into another keratoconus patient? And I didn't like that idea. And indeed, the eye banks cannot check for keratoconus. So what if my donor has keratoconus? And lastly, what in fact flattens the cornea? For sure, the depth of implantation and the dimension of the tunnel. But then we were wondering, is it the volume of the ring segment or maybe the intrinsic stiffness of the ring segment? Now, going back 10 years, um, we were looking a lot into biomechanics of crosslinking. And I had an MD PhD student that was working on that paper, Olivier Richaud. And one morning, he accidentally left the lab. And at that time, the crosslinking machines didn't have a timer. It was just running. He left the machine running for about eight hours, delivering 60 joule to a cornea. And when we came back to the lab, this cornea looked like a piece of plastic. It was super stiff and super hard. And having this in mind, what happens if we get a very, very stiff ring segment? So cross-linking the ring segment before you insert it, and then you are not limited to any endothelial damage. You're not limited to 5 joule or 10 joule, and this is more or less the, the maximum we do in, in a human cornea. You can go way higher, and this is what we did. So we cross-linked that ring segment before inserting it, and we used up to 60 joule. And that's more than 10 times the energy of the Dresden protocol. And what we have now are preliminary stress strain measurements. And indeed, the cornea gets super stiff. And not only stiff, it doesn't swell anymore that quickly. So you can put it into water, and it will remain the same size for several minutes. And that's a huge advantage when you want to put the string segment in. So we call it, for now, Ada CXL from Adamas, indestructible, Greek. And why performing cross-linking on the ring segment? Well, as I said, it's extremely easy to insert. My learning curve was very steep because I had the easiest time to get that ultra-stiff ring segment into the cornea, into the tight tunnel, and nothing lives in that cornea. Every single cell uh, keratocyte is dead. It's just a collagen scaffold. And whether the flattening corresponds to the degree of stiffening, yes or no, this will be um, responded to in part in the second part uh, of the talk that is given by Emilio Torres. Let me just show you how we cross-linked the tissue. So the entire procedure is a mirror of what you are doing, Shadi, with one exception, which is now the imbibition and the ultra-high-fluence cross-linking. Now you would see how super stiff these the ring segments become.
So this is actually my doing. I think this is the third or fourth ring segment I've ever implanted. And it was very easy to get in. Even the last 20%, which usually are hard due to compression. Emilio, would you like to take over? Super. Here comes the second part. So just keep keep going then with the Fento Cares. Good afternoon, everyone. And uh, so starting corneal ring segments were for sure uh, uh, innovative procedure, and, and I'm sure that now the Fento Cares is the evolution of the of the rings. That's thanks to Susan Jacob and Zimmer together with Shadi that put this technology into the Fento laser. So here you saw before already, we perform the procedures. And the important here is that we are able to use the OCT. So that's a very nice tool that Z8 has, so we can precisely know at which depth we are, and that's another layer of security we have, safety we have. So from the beginning, we started, as Farhad showed, to implant the corneal rings uh, after the Fento cares already cross-linked. And here is, is another perspective, another case we had. Also, you can see after a short learning curve how easy it is to implant the corneal rings. Then. The results here, just one day after the surgery, we can see a, a, a nice improvement of the, the surface, improvement of astigmatism, and then of course we had some questions. This is just a day or two days after the surgery. You see also how the surface heals very quickly using Fento. That's just three days after there is no signs of erosion and a little bit of cornea edema. So that's the OCT image. The recovery is very quick as well. And then seeing some of the results, we were asking, I was asking myself as well, uh, how is the result? Does it correlate with the synthetic rings we had? So this is an example just three days after in which you have a huge central flattening of, uh, of the cornea. And then comes the biomechanics. So do they work similar, a Fento cares and a synthetic ring? Well, to try and start answering this, we uh, use it, the OCT elastography. And just for those who are not used to, the elastography makes a deformation on the cornea, in this case with eye pressure change. And then we are able to analyze the strain of the corneal tissue. So we did this before already with uh, synthetic rings. And just take attention to one color here in the central red color. That means strain changes. So when we implant a corneal ring, a synthetic corneal ring, we see those changes in the middle. So the cornea here was relaxed. And we, we tested this with many sizes. So Repeating our experiment now, we did also with FentoCare, so using the Z8 again, here is the video. Again, the OCT guided, and then we implanted the corner rings also with the jerky technique, so let them dry, and then evaluate them on the OCT elastography. Here are the results, you see the cornea, that's a normal cornea without any corneal rings, without any strain modification, or actually this blue means a compression of the tissue, which we would expect. So do you remember that red we saw before? We don't see here. So that's the normal behavior of a cornea. And now with Fentocares, 120 arc length, still very similar to a normal cornea, so no significant strain change, although we did have a high flattening, so a huge flattening and no significant strain. In the same, we observed it with 160 arc length and also with big arc lengths to 10 Fento cares. So in conclusion, 
The Z8 provide us the precision of customization and on top of that using the OCT pre-op, which is amazing and increase our safety. Looking to the biomechanics, the fentocare did not cause any unnatural corneal deformation that was different from the synthetic rings. Therefore, we might here uh, have less extrusion risk. Susan and Jacob already proved this clinically, but here is a, a study ex vivo as well. And there might be a role here in the astigmatism correction between those techniques. And finally, the tissue addition on the fentocare is likely the main factor, not the forces or the strain distribution changes. Thank you very much. That's and that's, great. that's, that's okay. our team that was involved. I just thank you, everyone. The photo is there as well. Great. Thank you, Minya.